A big question I've had is about medical health care, access, travel, anything to do with that in the north. So I'm going to break down some things that are important to know as a teacher coming up to the north. The first thing I want to break down is just the process of getting your health card as well as some health coverage and some options that you may have. So I'm going to end the video with some stories about my experiences with medical travel. So if you're here just for the stories, skip ahead. If you're here for the boring breakdown of documents, stay tuned. Okay, so the first step I want to talk about is a health card. So I have a Nunavut health card. It's extremely easy to get, but it's not required. If you want to keep your health card from your province or other territories, that's fine. But that is going to limit you on some things. So I didn't get one at first, and that was because you can still get your prescription, see the healthcare nurse, even go on non-emergent medical travel, but this is where it's important. If you have an emergency and you need to be medevaced out of the community, so they are calling in a plane specifically to take you out. Let's say if you have a broken leg that can't wait or a very serious injury, that, think of an ambulance cost, it's huge. Um, obviously, I've never had to pay it, but I have heard of somebody who's had it cost them $30,000, another person that they were charged $80,000 if they didn't have their Nunavut healthcare card. So if you're concerned about emergencies, well, truth be told, you can't plan for those. So it's super easy to get the health card. Step one, I just Googled Nunavut health card. That's going to send you to the government page. So you're gonna see all the steps. Now it's gonna ask for a proof of residency document. I sent in my job offer page. Then head down and you'll see the download the application form. Very straightforward form, really easy to fill out. Now, if you have a contract, you can put your date if you don't plan on staying longer. I had an indeterminate contract, so I selected permanently and you'll just say that you've moved here for work. And of course, anything to do with your family there. Now at the bottom, it's gonna say you must mail your application to the address below. I sent it to that email that was provided and everything was good to go. I scanned everything to them and they sent it to me, no problem. So you've got your health card. What about insurance? So as a teacher, you're going to be given a packet and you have to apply for that insurance. Now that's going to be self-explanatory. I'm not going to talk you through that. That packet's going to give you who to contact and everything. The only piece of advice I want to give you is Nunavut is small. We don't have an entire department dedicated just to answering your emails about your insurance. So I had some colleagues this past year who sent all their stuff in didn't get an answer, waited, 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 finally sent them an email in January being like, where's my insurance card? And they were told that it hadn't even been processed and their email had just gotten lost amongst vacation or people changing jobs. Either way, for me, it went very smoothly. I got all mine within a month, but if you're not getting that response, send the follow-up because you want your insurance, especially if you're going home for Christmas. A big thing I want to prepare new teachers for is what we don't have up here. So dentists or eye doctors, those are rotational. So we'll have somebody come up for a week and then leave. Those wait lists are months and months long. And so if you need to see an eye doctor or a dentist before you come up, do so. Make those appointments before you get up here and do them either at Christmas or in the summer. Um, any specialist, I speak from experience. I was referred to an ENT while I've been up here. I have been on the referral list for two years and I have yet to see this specialist. So you're going to want to keep your specialist appointments in your hometown. Those are extremely hard to get to. We have only people traveling from down south to come up here. So think of your wait times for down south. We have to wait for those doctors to be free to come up to us. So I wanna take a second to talk about mental health care in Nunavut. So this past year, I started using something called Homewood Health, and it's what the government of Nunavut offers its employees as a free therapy. So you can call and you can have one person that you work with and you call them and make different appointments. 
Now, I was told when I called them that we get four sessions per year. And this was my first year using it, even though I've been in the North for three years. And so I had 12 sessions. And so those carry over if you don't use them all in one year, which is great. However, if you do use them all and you want other services, we do have mental health nurses in Nunavut and they're great and they're very kind. However, one downside can be that they are rotational. So they'll stay sometimes a few weeks, sometimes a few months, and then they'll move on. And so in one year, I needed to get different medication and Homewood Health can't give that. And so I went to the mental health nurse and I saw a different one three different times in the one year. So that can be really hard as therapy, you're building up a very trusting relationship. And so check out some online resources. Homewood Health allows you to do telephone conferences as well as video chats if you wanna see in person. But those are kind of the options that my community had for in-person versus online therapy. Okay, and then the last bit is medical travel. So I'm going to tell you my two experiences with medical travel. This is not a be all tell all. I am not a nurse. I don't know the ins and outs of everything going on up here. I can only speak from my experience and give you a heads up about it. The first time I ever went on medical travel, I had a problem with my eye and eye problems we do not want to hold off on. So they sent me on the next available plane, which was luckily leaving that afternoon. So they sent me out. I went there, I was immediately seen. They gave me everything I needed and I was sent on my way. Now, when you get sent there, they're gonna arrange your flight for you. They're gonna give you your ticket. We'll be put up in a hotel now, when you come back for medical travel, this is where it's important for the paperwork. You get a certain allowance for how much money you get for food, for taxis, for incidentals. Like if you get sent out suddenly and need shampoo and conditioner or some Advil or anything like that, you have an allowance per day that you can claim for that. So when you get back from medical travel, you're gonna want your big, there's a giant pink slip that the doctor will sign off saying that you have permission to go. You're gonna want your medical certificate and you're gonna ask your secretary for the food allowance form to fill out. And then you're gonna claim all those things for every day that you were gone. So just make sure you make those claims because you get a lot of money back, especially it's very expensive to buy food there. So make the claims. My second trip with medical travel wasn't as smooth. So I first of all waited about a month before I was able to go out because it was a non-emergent situation, but I needed to have an ultrasound done. And we only have ultrasound machines in our community for a couple days a month. It's a rotating one. And so they sent me out to go get it done. Now I got there and I called for a verification of my appointment time and they said that my appointment was canceled. So then I was told, okay, just go to Emerge and see if they can get you in that way. And so I go to Emerge and they say, well, this is an emergent. I know. And so this kind of started a very long period of me waiting. And so I was there for about five days before I even got in for an appointment. Then I got in for the appointment, but it was Friday. And so I had to wait till at least Monday to see if somebody could sign my medical papers to discharge me because medical travel will not book your flight back until your paperwork is signed. It doesn't matter if they tell you verbally, medical travel needs to get the okay from the hospital. And so then there was a bad weather storm and ended up with me being gone almost two weeks from my community. And all I had packed for clothing wise was one day because <laughs> it was supposed to be a very quick in and out. So I do recommend packing a little bit of extra clothes. You do get given a suitcase for your trip. You just never know if you're gonna be there longer. Both of my medical travels were fairly simple. I had some bumps, I had some extensions, I had some delays and that happens, but they were just to a Kali and then they had all the resources there. Sometimes they don't even have the resources in a Kali. In that case, depending on what you need, you'll either get sent to Edmonton or you'll get sent to Ottawa. Now it's more often Ottawa, but there's just different situations. And the same thing will happen, the same process in those places as well. You'll get put up in a hotel, you'll get a food allowance. And so it's the same system, just a different city. 
A side note for medical travel, I was very lucky. A dear friend of mine lives in Akali. You can choose to stay with a friend instead of in a hotel and you add that onto your expenses. And so I gave him, I think it was $60 a day that Nunavu provided to do that lodging. So that is an option if you would rather stay with a friend during that time. I think that covers a lot of basics and what people were asking me about the Nunavut healthcare system in regards to travel, health cards, benefits, and so on. Uh, this is kind of specifically to help a teacher get prepared, but if anybody has any questions about the healthcare or access to it that I experienced, I would love to answer. Like I said though, I am not a professional in the healthcare system. I don't have all the answers and this is my experience that I've had with them. So please check it out and ask any questions or comments below.